Otis College of Art and Design presents Using a Grid to Create a Planar Form With me, Chris Badger In this video, I will show you how to design and build a Bristol board sketch model of a simple three-dimensional extrusion using a grid as a basis for design. This extruded form is the first step in a longer process that results in the development of a complex, irregular planar solid. You will need two 18 by 24 inch sheets of graph paper, two 18 by 24 inch sheets of Bristol board, one roll of artist tape or blue masking tape, one mat knife with extra blades, and one 36 inch steel ruler or aluminum ruler, one self-healing cutting mat, and a couple of different colored pencils. Look at your graph paper. It has two axes, one horizontal and one vertical. They're called the X and the Y axis. The X and the Y axis are perpendicular to each other, and together they define the two-dimensional space of a plane. Using the XY grid as a guide, lightly mark off an eight inch square. This will be the guide for determining the area of the first face of your form. Here are some examples of different polygons. Notice how the original square has been defamiliarized. These shapes are asymmetrical. They are dynamic. They have a gesture and unique character that does not appear in the even and stable regular square that they were designed from. The square is general. These shapes are particular and specific. These qualities of specificity will be present later on when this flat polygon becomes a three-dimensional object. An interesting shape will yield an interesting form. Using a half-inch minimum unit of measure, design a unique polygon with an area that roughly equals that of your square. Manage the complexity of your shape by using only 90 and 45 degree angles. Use both inside and outside corners. The inside corners will become negative spaces in your final three-dimensional form. At this stage, it is important that you stick to the grid. Every vertex of your polygon should land on a half-inch grid point. Use your mat knife and ruler to cut out your polygon. Lay your Bristol paper down on top of your cutting mat so that it is aligned with the printed grid. Make sure that some of the mat surface is visible around the entire perimeter of the Bristol board. Use two mats edge to edge if needed. Tape the Bristol board in place with masking tape. Use your ruler to transfer the grid lines of the mat onto the Bristol paper. Use a hard pencil and lay down as little graphite as possible. Cleanliness and precision are very important at this stage. Drawing a crooked grid will cause you to build a crooked and bent form. Every step of the process is present in the final outcome. Lay your cutout polygon face up on your gridded Bristol board so that all of the vertices of the polygon land on the half inch intersections of the grid that you have drawn on your Bristol board. Mark the points on the grid that correspond to the vertices of your polygon.
Remove the polygon and connect the points using your ruler. Flip your polygon over, line it up on the grid, and repeat the process once again. Generating the exact mirror image of your first shape. You now have the two mirrored planes of what will be an extruded form. I will also use the grid to mark off an 8 inch strip. I will use this later to create the sides I will need to extrude my polygon along the z-axis. Cut them both out using your mat knife and ruler.
Press the two shapes back to back and make certain that they line up perfectly. Any deviation in the similarity of the two mirrored faces will create bends and gaps in your three-dimensional form. Look at the face of your polygon. While the two matching planes are back to back like this, they represent a two-dimensional shape. We can see the original grid made of the X and Y axis running perpendicular to each other. Rotate your pieces 90 degrees so that you can only see the edge of the Bristol paper. Slowly separate the two planes with one in each hand, keeping them aligned with each other in space. This empty space will be the volume of the three-dimensional form that is produced by pushing our two-dimensional plane outward along a third axis. Measure each side of your polygon and subdivide your 8-inch strip into sections with widths that correspond to the lengths of each side of your polygon. You can measure by simply counting the number of squares or grid units that make up each side. Accuracy, not speed, is important at this stage. These pieces will be the sides of your extruded form. Assemble all of your pieces using masking tape. Because this form is only a sketch model, and only one step in a larger process of design, we can tape along the outside of our seams. While the look of the tape is not so important at this stage, the accuracy of the alignment of the parts is. Before making a taped seam, lay the pieces down flat and line them up with each other perfectly.
Once you've taped the outside of your form, you can go back and place tape along the inside seams to reinforce your structure. Look at what you have made. You have produced a three-dimensional solid by extending your original two-dimensional polygon eight inches along an axis called Z. The Z axis is perpendicular to both the X and Y axis, and it constitutes the third dimension of space. We can call this an extruded form. It is a two-dimensional shape that has been pushed into three-dimensional space along a fixed path for a fixed distance without changing its original profile. In other words, it is still essentially your original polygon designed in two dimensions, but thicker. The next phase of the design process is to shift this object on the Z axis and design a form that is particular and specific from every angle a form that must be experienced spatially in order to be fully comprehended. <laughs> 